reaction when you saw the photo hit the internet? Uh... I was I was actually in a photo shoot oh, wow. when my phone started talking and I went, it's cool, it's cool. But there's a number. And when that number reaches about 32, something's happened. Something's happening. And I got a baby. So I'm like, let me check. I look and I go, oh no. Oh, no. oh yes. <laughs> I think about the photo shoot. You yeah. know, and the folks that were there, uh, Asia was there. Yeah, uh -huh. is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, she was there. I thought about her and about... Uh, all the wonderful folks and the culture, you know, and, yeah. and it's great. A beautiful, beautiful blackness, yeah. art, culture, creativity. That's what we're about. That's you know what I mean? About. And it's always good, it's always good to make a ruckus. Yes. You know what I mean? When it's a positive ruckus, a po make positive. the positive ruckus. And here we go. So recently, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium star Jonathan Majors graced the cover of Ebony Magazine in what can be described as nothing less than a disturbing image. Now, this whole situation bothers me for three reasons. Number one, I supported the brother. I spent an entire weekend watching and talking about a movie I did not want to see, but did anyway because he was in it. Because I think it's a good thing in a post Tyler Perry era of black filmmaking to see black men in masculine roles where he's not abusing women. Now, the movie was terrible, but he was excellent. And I praised him for putting in a good performance in such a terrible circumstance. But then he turns around and does this magazine cover. Legs crossed in a pink feather shawl with his lips glossed and puckered. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man stop it that's not the image we want to put out as black men and shame on ebony magazine a black publication for pushing that nonsense for aiding in the demasculization of black men which brings me to my second point the reason why i find this image so offensive is because i take the black male image seriously because i too myself am a black male a black man and we all share a collective image and this is the second time this week we've seen something like this. The first is with ASAP Rocky being photographed in a feminine position in the back caring for a child, while Rihanna, his girlfriend slash baby mama, is out front leading in the dominant leadership role, pulling him along as if she's his guide and protector. Beta! Now the reason why I'm speaking on this topic is because it's the running theme of my channel which is entertainment media is more than just entertainment. It's propaganda through art, TV, movies, video games, music, and magazine covers are all communicating a message. For good or bad, better or worse, it's about influencing the mind of the person that's consuming it. So when you put a man in a submissive position in a family photo, or when you have his legs folded and his licks greased and puckered, or when you have him in a dress, or when you use him to promote rainbow culture, you're saying something about the men in that group. You're saying something about me. You're communicating or propagating a message about us. You're saying these men are not leaders. These men are not masculine. These men are not to be respected as men. They can be regarded as boys or women. These men can be manipulated and controlled. It's an attempt to change the image of black masculinity to redefine it as something that is docile, which is an abhorrent way to describe a man because it makes him something that the women in his community don't respect or desire, something that children can't look up to, thus further alienating him from the family structure. That's why it's important for black men to be cognizant of their image and not to allow others to manipulate us into these types of roles, because I believe there is an organized effort to emasculate black men so that the black community can continue to be controlled. If you go back to the book of Exodus in the Bible, the first seven verses of the first chapter explains the growth of the Hebrew people who were living in Egypt at the time. They started off as a few dozen people. It was a large extended family at best, but then it evolved into a powerful ethnic group that began to outnumber the other inhabitants of the nation they were living in. The Bible describes them as becoming strong and prosperous. Then a new ruler of Egypt comes to power and he doesn't like what he sees and he immediately tries to oppress them, but it doesn't work. The Hebrews continue to grow. They continue to prosper. They remain strong. Then he comes up with another idea, which is to go after the Hebrew males. So he tells the midwives that when Hebrew women give birth, that if the baby is a boy, put it to death. 
but if it's a girl, allow it to live. Because he recognized the strength of a nation rests on the shoulders of its men, not its women, not its children, but its men. And he did that in an effort to control their population, to decrease their strength and oppress them. All of this parallels with something I've often heard Dr. Tia San Johnson say, that oppression is often presented in the form of male-on-male -male conflict or misandry where the dominant group attacks the males of the oppressed group to keep the entire group as a whole in check. So in America, historically speaking, racism was largely directed towards black men. And thus, by putting black men under a constant state of oppression, the black community as a whole is kept in check. Because again, you don't have to worry about women and children if the men are at a commission. Now, in contemporary society, in this post-civil rights era of black American history, it's been a way to keep black people from prospering culturally and economically. Men have been removed from the family and replaced with government. And it's kept us in a weakened state, reduced us to a group of second-class citizens. And the third reason why it bothers me is because they claim it's an homage to an anime character. Alexander Julian Gibson, the stylist who came up with the photo shoot, said it was inspired by a one-piece villain named Don Quixote do Flamingo. Now you know, as an anime fan, that really set me off. Because that's complete bull****. To say this is an homage to a One Piece character is saying that the village people were an homage to construction workers, Indian chiefs, sailors, bikers, cowboys, and police officers because they were dressed in the regalia. So Jonathan Majors may have on an outfit similar to Don Quixote do Flamingo, but he's not honoring the character by sitting there with his legs crossed like a proper lady and his lips puckered up. That posture is not a nod to anime fandom, it's a hat tip to the rainbow community. It's using anime and black men to push that agenda. I also think it's an attempt to besmirch the image of the anime manga community. You see, progressives like to invade spaces they don't occupy and use it as a platform to push their message because people don't accept those philosophies head on because they're illogical. So they look for means to propagate their ideas through art and entertainment. We've seen them do this with the movie industry, specifically the MCU, comics, gaming, television, and sports, as well as children's programming. But the one area where they haven't gained any traction is in the anime manga community. Because it's foreign, it's largely based out of Japan. It's out of their range of influence. And as a result, that's where people have drifted. Over the years, as they've pushed this agenda in American entertainment media, the popularity of anime has skyrocketed as audiences have viewed it as an alternative to the progressive messaging found in entertainment media in America. Because the average American lives a hard life. 85% of people hate their jobs, 75% of people say they didn't marry the spouse they wanted, and 70% of people live paycheck to paycheck. Meaning, most people get up, fight traffic to go to a job they don't like just to come home to a spouse they don't love in a house they can't afford. Now that's a tough way to live, but most people do it. And that's why I believe so many people self-medicate. They use food, sex, narcotics, and alcohol. But some look to entertainment. That's their drug of choice. They use it to escape reality for two to three hours or however long their favorite program runs. They tune in to tune out from life. They don't want to be lectured or propagated to. They just want to be entertained. And that's why anime is so popular. Now, there are rainbow characters in anime, but they're not put there to fulfill some alternative agenda. They're put there for artistic reasons, not social political ones. And because progressives have not been able to control anime and manga, they've resorted to shaming tactics. We've seen them refer to men who watch anime as incels, losers, erotic lovers of minors, and animated intercourse. You know, the same things they used to say about comic book readers and gamers. Until women were allowed to dominate those industries. And progressives were allowed to propagate their messages within those industries. Now they're mainstream. Now they're okay. And I think the purpose of putting majors in a rainbow-inspired pose is to say, hey, anime is now a part of the rainbow culture. It's something that a strong, masculine, heteronormative man would not, should not do or like. So I think it's an attempt to muddy the waters to say that, hey, just like American media pushes the agenda, so does anime. And that simply isn't true. Because Japan's primary focus is to entertain people, not to inundate them with social agendas. Okay, so you've heard me say this a million times. 
So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comments section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And while I do appreciate you sharing, subbing, and leaving comments, I'm going to ask that you take another step further in keeping the channel going. I set up a membership plan for those of you who would like to offer further support in the development of this channel. It's not anything expensive or special, I'm just asking for 99 cents a month, which is enough for me to continue doing the work that I do here. Help me! Help me! N Help me! In the future, there will be additional tiers with added benefits, but for right now, I just need your support so that I can cover basic costs. So please, sign up so I can continue bringing you awesome content. This is The Layman's Journal. I'm out.